Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the AI Daily news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with some new product releases from Meta. Obviously, Meta was big in the news last week with their model releases for Llama 3.1, which included for the first time their large model, Llama 3.1405B. But now we are back to a more consumer-focused announcement where people can create their own AI avatars. The company writes that they're rolling out AI Studio, which they call a place for people to create, share, and discover AIs to chat with. Anyone can create their own AI designed to make you laugh, generate memes, give travel advice, and so much more. They're also saying that creators can make AI versions of themselves, or as extensions of themselves, to use their phrase, to answer common DM questions and story replies. AI Studio is the first product that Meta is releasing that's built on Llama 3.1. AI Studio is available on the web or in the Instagram app. When you create an AI, they say it can be just for you, or you can share it with your followers and friends. With the studio, you can customize an AI character's name, personality, tone, avatar, and tagline. They've even created an 18-page handbook to help you actually do this. Although very different, there's some similarities with custom GPTs in that these AIs can be just for you or they can be shareable more broadly. Some of the examples they point to are a chef-created AI called Eat Like You Live There, which offers personalized tips for embracing local dining customs while traveling, What Lens Bro, which is exactly what it sounds like, an AI from a videographer and photographer that offers tips for finding the perfect lens, as well as some more positive affirmation and meme type AIs as well. Now, I think one of the more interesting things about this is the focus on giving creators the ability to create an AI as an extension of themselves to interact with their fans through DMs and story replies. Meta writes, creators can customize their AI based on things like their Instagram content, topics to avoid, and links they want it to share. They can do this through the professional dashboard in the Instagram app. They also point out that responses from creator AIs are clearly labeled, so there's full transparency for fans. One of the things that makes Meta an interesting company to follow when it comes to AI is the fact that they are competing both on the model and ecosystem side of things as well as on the consumer product side, so I will certainly be watching to see what type of uptake, if any, there is for these new custom AIs. Yesterday, we discussed how Apple was reportedly pushing back the release of its Apple intelligence features to October, whereas iOS 18 is coming out in September. But as a little advanced morsel, Apple did officially debut its AI features for developers as part of their iOS beta. Investopedia writes that the beta version's release could boost confidence in Apple's AI potential, following these reports that it might not release its AI update until after the planned iOS 18 rollout in September. The technical team at Apple also used it as an occasion to share more about what they had been building. Roaming Pong from Apple writes, As Apple Intelligence is rolling out to our beta users today, we are proud to present a technical report on our foundation language models that power these features on devices and cloud. The report describes the design and evaluations of our LLMs in detail, including architecture, data curation, pre-training and post-training recipes, optimization, feature adaptation, and evaluation results. While these LLMs are not chatbots, we train them to have general purpose capabilities so that they can power a wide range of features including summarization, writing assistance, tool use, and coding. Now, there's been a lot of discussion of these particular models, but I think the interesting thing from my standpoint is just that it further shows how much more Apple is engaging with the larger developer community and the AI community in general when it comes to their model development. One other interesting nugget, Apple said in that technical paper that the two AI models that it used in Apple Intelligence were pre-trained on Google design chips in the clouds. CNBC and other media outlets are trying to characterize it as Apple trying to find alternatives to NVIDIA, But there's nothing necessarily in that note to actually indicate that. For example, later in the article, CNBC writes, Apple doesn't name Google or NVIDIA in its 47-page paper, but did note its Apple Foundation model, or AFM, and AFM server are trained on cloud TPU clusters. Speaking of Google, unfortunately, once again, people are talking not about their technology, but about the discourse around them. Summed up in this New York Intelligencer article, everyone hates that Google AI Olympics commercial. The Intelligencer writes, If you've been watching the Olympics, you have inevitably been exposed to an advertisement from Google called Dear Sydney. The premise involves a father talking about his daughter, a grade school track and field athlete who would like to write a fan letter to Olympian and 400-meter world record holder Sydney McLaughlin Laverone. Says the narrator dad, she wants to show Sydney some love, and I'm pretty good with words, but this has to be just right. What is this made-up man to do? To share this sweet moment with his daughter, he decides to phone it in. The dad tells Gemini, Google's artificial intelligence model, to, quote, help my daughter write a letter telling Sydney how inspiring she is and be sure to mention that my daughter plans on breaking her world record one day. Continues the article, what? Why would a dad who is pretty good with words need an AI model to help his daughter write a heartfelt message to her favorite athlete? Aren't these moments what parenthood is all about? What sort of lesson is this? Not only does it imply to your kid that it's okay to offload writing assignments to AI, it also suggests it's a good idea to let the computer express feelings for you. Now, regular listeners know that I'm going to be the first to jump up and down all over people who I think are just bringing some pre-existing bias and hatred of AI to their critique. 
But I do think that the accusation that this feels a little tone deaf to be kind of accurate here. I saw a lot of people even who really like AI pointing out that if this is the best use case that Google can think of, it's not a particularly good look for the field. Indeed, one might argue that the whole point of AI is to create more space and time for exactly this type of human interaction rather than outsourcing these incredibly special tasks. Lastly today, a little prediction from Silicon Valley around the advance of AGI. At an event last week, Cora and Poe founder, as well as OpenAI board member Adam D'Angelo, was asked when his best guess was in terms of when AI would be able to do the majority of work humans do today, and he said within 5 to 15 years. Said D'Angelo, I think that at some point there's going to be a threshold we hit where the AI is able to do the work of machine learning researchers that are currently creating the AI itself. After AI models can create a feedback loop known as recursive self-improvement, D'Angelo said we will have achieved, quote, something that's fundamentally very different than the kind of AI we have today. So what do you think? Is 5 to 15 years a good guess? Is it too short, too long? Let me know in the comments here on YouTube or on Spotify. But for now, that is going to do it for the headlines. Up next, the main episode.